Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. Um, before I get into what I want to talk about in this video, which is all about the full moon in Leo, I just wanted to say quickly, welcome if you are new to my channel. Um, welcome if you are a recent subscriber. Um, thank you so much for being here. And also a big thank you to all of you who are taking the time to comment um, on the content that I'm sharing and sort of share your own sort of opinions and views and experiences because it just, it, I really love it when I read the comments and it really helps me to know that I am on the right track in what I'm sharing when I know um, from what you're telling me that it is resonating and that a lot of you are kind of getting the same insight and the same downloads. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it when you do comment. So, and please continue to do so. Um, so I hadn't ever sort of, although I'm obviously an astrologer and a galactic astrologer, I hadn't really um, planned on doing full and new moon videos. Um, I know there's loads of people out there that sort of share this kind of information, but it seems to be what I am being guided to do right now. So without any further ado, we have a full moon in Leo on the 25th of January. Um, now, this is a particularly potent week in terms of astrological energies because we've obviously just had the recent ingress of Pluto into Aquarius on the 20th, which was two days ago from when I'm recording this video. And um, we have the full moon in three days time. And two days after the full moon, Uranus is going to station direct. So that is quite a lot of activity in the outer planets, um, Pluto and Uranus. And with this beautiful um, lunation sort of landing in between, um, incredibly potent powerful energies and um, that we are obviously being um, invited to navigate and what I do with these sort of um, full and new moon videos is kind of give you a flavour of the energies from my perspective and then pull out some of the fixed star and galactic and cosmic energies that are also coming through and anything else that sort of jumps out at me. So we have um, this full moon in Leo is particularly, um, it's it's a really beautiful um, one. Um, we have Leo, so the moon is in Leo, opposing the sun in Aquarius. And this lunation is happening at five degrees, 14 minutes of each of the um, signs, Leo and Aquarius. Um, now, before I get into the energies of Leo, just to sort of point out that that five degrees and then the 14, which um, sort of goes down to a five when you add the one and the four together. So that's the double five energy and the, and the five energy is all about change and transformation. And sort of if you think of it as numbers one to nine, five lies in the middle, it's like the pivot point, it's the turning point. Um, so I really love working with the energy of the number five. And incidentally, I'm in a personal five year this year, so I know that there's going to be a lot of change coming through. It's also about adventure and exploration and sort of taking us out beyond where we might have been before. So it's really um, very exciting energy to be coming through within the chart on this um, full moon. But when we think about Leo, Leo is the fifth sign of the zodiac. So there you go, the there's the five again. Um, it is very much to do with courage, um, being, being and feeling bold and there's a strong streak of creativity that comes through the fifth house and the fifth sign um, a lot of inspiration and um, fun and joy and sort of connecting to the inner child and our childlike enthusiasm and optimism is very much linked to Leo. There's also of course the symbolism of Leo the lion which brings through strength and courage 
and that kind of real sort of loud roar. Um, you know, self-expression is really important when Leo is active. Leo can be quite dramatic. Certainly Leo wants to be seen and wants to have an audience. Um, so, you know, this is a very confident sign. It's a very radiant sign. And the expression sort of shine your light is so linked to Leo. You know, it's just, it's beautiful. It's warm. Um, it's sunny. It's jovial and very authentic. There's also a lot of passion that comes through with Leo and also leadership, but not leadership of the sort of, of the bigger picture. It's about leadership of the self and being authentic and being truly all of you. So um, with Leo, the kind of the focus is very much about stepping into the wholeness of who you are. It's ruled by the sun. So, you know, this is very sort of blinding light um, and radiance and yeah, just sunshine and um, passion, warmth, radiance. It's just it's such beautiful energy that we're, we're working with. And when you are stepping into the Leo energy, really, Leo is asking you to love all parts of you and to really um, embrace and acknowledge the truth of who you are. And um, so, you know, this um, is, I can't really say it again, can I? But it is so beautiful, the energy of this full moon. Now, um, as always, when we look at the chart, there are other aspects, um, both with the moon and the sun and also other planets that we need to take into account because the energies, you know, this is a whole chart. So all the energies do have an influence in what is going on. And um, so there is a fixed T-square because the sun and the moon in opposition are lying in a square to Jupiter at six degrees of Taurus. Um, now, T-squares can be a little bit challenging, especially when the sign is, well, when the energies are fixed. Um, T-squares kind of create a big um, sense of tension um, and really something has to give. But when I look at squares, I always see them as opportunities for growth because where there is tension, there has to be action. You cannot avoid or ignore a T-square when it's in the chart. Um, so, and the fact that Jupiter is forming part of this T-square, Jupiter is about growth, it's about expansion, it is about our spiritual selves and our belief systems. And the fact that Jupiter is in Taurus just means that any change that comes about through this full moon and this lunation is likely to create quite solid, tangible and lasting change because of the Taurus energy. And um, so, you know, this is about um, expanding into the whole of you, but acknowledging as well that it isn't always easy and that it does take some effort and some challenge along the way that you do have to push through some resistance when you are trying to embody this energy. And um, there are some interesting squares with Mars. Um, which is squaring Chiron in Aries, Chiron being the wound and in Aries of the identity of the self. So whenever Mars is active, Mars is energising, motivating and um, sort of giving you a real boost of life force and energy to make things happen. And of course, with this square energy, again, it's about growth. It's about pushing through resistance. So Mars is really saying, you know, it's time to really face that wound of the self and with Leo trying to encourage us to step into the whole of our of who we are um, and to sort of take leadership of the self these are really interesting and very beautiful so supportive energies even though they are squares um, so, you know, we're being really called to really face that wound of who we are, of not feeling good enough, of not really um, feeling um, that we have the right to be here, um, of low confidence, low self-esteem. This full moon in Leo is saying, no, actually, you know, I can help you with this. I can really support you and give you that courage um, and that fullness and that wholeness that maybe you haven't really been able to connect with before or until now. Now, Chiron is also coming into a conjunction with the North Node. Um, and that is very much about the North Node is pushing us, pushing our growth, pushing our evolution. And But 
in acknowledging that there are wounds that we have to face up to and deal with and heal and work through if we are able to embrace our full potential. Um, so again, you know, that will be exact in February, but the energies are strong now and there's so much synergy with the energy of the full moon in this chart. Um, so we also have the sun next to Pluto, slightly wider conjunction now, um, because Pluto is still at zero degrees of Aquarius, but still very strong, strong energies with these two um, planets sitting side by side. And Pluto, of course, is all about deep transformation, soul growth, soul evolution, being able to face the shadow, look at what has been hidden, the things that we maybe didn't want to see or felt ashamed of before, they are all being um, sort of brought up so that we can transmute them and that we can really transform our inner light, which is the sun and who we are and the potential of who we are. And um, so if we look at the um, galactic and cosmic um fixed star astrology briefly as well because this is really really exciting um the shapley attractor is one of the most powerful cosmic points certainly that has been you know um found discovered to date and it is the the most powerful of the four cosmic points that we look at when we're looking at galactic astrology and cosmic points in the chart now the energy of the shapley tractor is about truth and nothing but the truth there is no room for anything fake anything false um when the Shapley is active. And in this particular chart, it is very active. So it's in an opposition to Jupiter, Shapley being at two degrees of Scorpio. Um, it is squaring the Sun, the Moon and Pluto, and it is in a trine to Saturn. So this is a very activated cosmic point. And um, when the Shapley is activated, we have to get straight to the truth. It's the truth and nothing but the truth. And the fact that Shapley is activating or squaring the sun and the moon, you know, this is our sort of our deep emotions of who we are. And it is our, it's our light. It's about sort of getting rid of anything that is um, preventing us from stepping into that. Pluto is about transformation. So, of course, the Shapley squaring Pluto is about, you know, getting rid of anything that is standing in the way from us seeing the truth, from seeing what is hidden, from um, really kind of exploring the potential of our evolution and our growth and what is possible, what we need to step into. And um, Jupiter in opposition is expanding this <laughs> and kind of, yes, you could say it's blowing it out of proportion, but actually I, I, it feels more that it's really just giving Shapley a real boost and saying, come on, it feels like it's time. And the trying to Saturn Saturn being in Pisces um, is, you know, Saturn in Pisces is all about our spiritual growth, our spiritual maturity and mastery. So again, you know, the Shapley is removing anything that's sort of standing in our way from seeing the true potential and what, you know, what we can um, actually get through and achieve this time. Um, there is also the south node is trying a star in the Orion constellation Rigel or Rigel um, and for me Rigel I'll, I'll pronounce it that way I know everyone has slightly different pronunciations for these fixed stars but for me um, Rigel is about information and the mind and there is history with this star of mind control and using um, sort of controlling information to control the populace but the fact that Rigel is in a trine to the south node the south node being where we have got um unhealthy codependency where we have perhaps um you know been sitting in um information and knowledge and understanding that isn't serving our greatest good anymore and maybe isn't even true this um fixed star trying the south node is helping us to really break free from any mind control from any patterns and conditioning and beliefs that maybe aren't rooted in truth and um, that need to be released and let go of so that we can start to really grow into our full potential and um, so that seems like a really helpful obviously 
trines being harmonious, really beneficial energy to really help us break out of where we might have been held captive or stuck. Um, certainly limited in many ways, but in particular through the mind. Um, and we also have this stunning, <laughs> absolutely stunning energy coming through from a fixed star called Rho Cancri or 55 Cancri in the Cancer constellation. Now, this particular star is at six degrees of Leo, so it is activating the moon. And Rho Cancri is the diamond planet. So a planet made of diamonds. How incredible is that? So what is happening here is that this energy, so this diamond energy, is coming through to activate this full moon. And of course, with the sun shining on the moon, you can just imagine <laughs> the light that is coming off. This is why I said it, it's so special. It's almost like blinding light. And when there is so much light um, coming through, there is nowhere for the dark to hide away. It's like everything is going to get blown open. It's going, it's, yeah, we're going to be able to see so much more than we could do before. Um, so this particular star isn't on the Galactic Astro um, Calculator and it is a lady who runs the Starseed Sanctuary. Um, I will share her website. She um, has basically um, been talking about this star in her work and um, it's it really sort of struck a chord with me. So if we think about diamonds being sort of multifaceted and um, reflective in just, you know, unlimited um, proportions, reflecting light, very luminescent, very pure, so purifying and transmuting the energy and um, sort of having, allowing us to really embrace all the different um, facets of us and how they come together to make a whole. And um, there's also the kind of um, sort of theory or Signot's theory and um, sort of theme here that, you know, diamonds are created from basically coal, <laughs> but they are created through intense pressure, which transforms them, alchemizes them into something of pure beauty and so much value, certainly to us on our planet. Um, so, you know, there is a real feeling that, you know, yes, we might feel like we are going through something and, you know, yes, have we been going through it for some time, but it often takes that level of pressure and intensity for things to truly transform and change and shift. Um, you know, if we were just to sit back and let things carry on as they always had, there would be no change. So the kind of this diamond energy is coming through to remind us that, you know, things can shift and can become absolutely incredibly stunningly beautiful but it doesn't it will take hard work so um but the rewards will be beyond worth it so the diamond frequency is coming through it's helping to activate us to shift our dna it's coming through to help us shift on and raise our consciousness very high frequency pure energy um and, you know, master healing, master activations, literally powering through any blocks, any shadow, um, and to really help us to access what is programmed within those diamonds, which have been there for eons. So um, sort of opening up, you know, portals to um, other other um, realms of the world, other um, areas of consciousness, knowledge and understanding, but this beautiful, luminescent, powerful light effectively. So this is why, you know, I'm saying this moon is special. It is so full of light. The moon's ruler is the sun, which is shining this light, you know, on a, the moon. And then we have this beautiful diamond energy coming through. So um, very exciting. Just to sort of add in another element or two, we are still working with um, the Monoceros Unicorn Energy, which is at 29 degrees of Cancer. So although Pluto is now in, is in Aquarius, 
it is still forming an out of sign opposition to Monoceros and um, this unicorn energy, which of course is all about um, peaceful and um, harmony, but deep transformation and um, very powerful, very noble, very regal energy. And um, we also have Pluto in conjunction to Aladfar. Now I've talked about the energy of that in my Pluto ingress video, but really Aladfar as one of the Lyran stars is in a nutshell about moving from fear to love. So with Leo being so much about heart consciousness and asking us to step into our heart, to act from the heart, to see from the heart, to feel from the heart um, and to balance out that energy, the strong Aquarian energy, which is very much in the head and the mind and coming into the heart, coming into the body, which again, I've been talking about a lot recently and um, because that is where the activations take place. That is where we kind of embrace the whole of who we are, step into the fullness and the wholeness of ourselves and we can start to shine like those beautiful diamonds and that Rocancrian energy. And of course, we have Altair as well, which is um, conjunction with the sun today. Um, but Pluto is going to catch up when it gets to two degrees of Cap of Aquarius. Sorry, and Altair is the eagle again. It's that majestic, strong, um, sovereign energy, being able to rise up and see the bigger picture, and sort of claim your power. Messages that are coming through to me are very much about, you know, it is time to step into the self, to really, um, it's going to be difficult <laughs> um, with all this light not to be able to see the shadow. The, the shadow is going to be potentially um, transmuted and will dissolve before our eyes because um, there's just going to be so much light with this particular lunation. So it is about stepping into you, to taking leadership of you, um, to stop looking outside of the self, to stop relying on other people, but just to really embrace all of who you are. Not that there's anything wrong with relying on other people, but this is about, um, you know, acceptance and love of the self. It's a very creative time, but it is really about um, having the self-belief, having the self-confidence, having the courage and the strength to be you. Time to step up, time to shine, time to shine a light on who you are. And that really means looking yourself to see yourself um, you know, you don't have to look at it through other people's eyes this time. It's like looking at you um, and yeah, just shining so brightly because the world needs to see you for who you are. And it's when we step into our true authentic selves, the lights get switched on, you know, the activations happen, the vibration lifts, the frequency rises and, you know, sounds simple doesn't it but I really do believe that that is when we ascend and we shift into a different way of being because we are able to let go of the sort of the all the stuff that's holding us back that's keeping us in fear and we step into light it really is from dark to light from fear to love it is that that simple so I hope you have resonated with what I have shared today. It does feel um, like a very, very special week. Um, I do do readings. So if you are interested, you can find out about my work, spiralbright.co.uk. There is a waiting list, though, for my astrology reading. So just bear that in mind. Um, and I have a monthly newsletter, which I send out on the last day of each month. So you can sign up for that via my website as well. But I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing um, rest of the day, wherever you are. Mm -hmm.